Hi everyone, Helen Blunden here at Activate Learn on Twitter. It is time for another book review. Now in the last couple of days, I have been reading this book by Daniel H. Pink called The Whole New Mind. And this was a book that was given to me as a gift, as you can see here from the inscription, from an old boss many, many years ago. I think it was back in around the time that this book was written, which was 2005. So this book, you may have heard about it, and you've obviously heard of Daniel Pink, who has written The Free Agent Nation, and he's written a whole heap of other books. But this one was given to me as a gift back in 2005 when it was published. And I did wonder why it was given to me as a gift. Was there a secret message that my boss was trying to uh, get me to understand? Very interesting. But A Whole New Mind is moving from the information age to the conceptual age. And what this book is about is that Daniel asserts, as we well know, that the world is currently changing and there are certain influences that are happening within the, the world, such as the rise of Asia, meaning that the jobs are going off to um, Asia, India, China for a lot cheaper than what we would do them here. There was also the fact that a lot of things are being automated. And also there's a third aspect. Let me try and get to my notes was abundance that uh, in a world where we're basically liberated by prosperity, we're not really happy. We're not finding meaning and purpose to our whole life. It was interesting that it was, as it was written in 2005, these are the things that we well know well today. So anyway, he says that knowing the fact that these are changes that are coming, well, we're already in them now, we need a whole new different mindset and he talks that our moving from the information age our l directed um, thinking which is our left directed thinking the analytical the rational the procedural type of thinking um, is not going to serve us well in a new world that requires kind of like new thinking so in a way he's basically saying not to change obviously our left brain to go into right brain because we can't have extremes of one or the other but to be able to balance more right brain thinking into our world and our work and our life now what is this right brain thinking it's effectively the creativity the autonomy the play aspect um, it's uh, the not procedural, it's the curiosity, the empathy and all that really good stuff, the artistic elements, the creativity and bring those into our lives. And it comes up with six senses, six new senses that will help build our whole new mind. And these six senses are design, story, symphony, empathy, play, and meaning. So let's look at each of those for now. Now, design. Okay, design is basically saying that in a world where it needs to be high concept and high touch, people are gonna go for experiences. And the experiences that stand out for them are things that make them feel good, products that make them feel good. And the way that the book is written is such that you read your chapter on design and then in the grey bits are some activities that you can do to boost your design element. And one of the activities, let me get it for you, is for it for the design activity, it said find a product or something in your life that you really hate the design of and try and come up with an alternative. So I'll show you what I really hate. Now, you might be thinking, but that's an awesome design. It's smooth, it's it's wonderful. The thing is, this is one of these rechargeable um, mouses, mice. 
And what you have to do is, see that? That's where you put your cable to recharge the bloody thing. Now, what do you see wrong with this? To get, to get my drift? So this is recharging now. I can't sit it up anywhere. I have to kind of have it sitting up like that. Or I don't know, maybe it comes in a stand. I've no idea. I haven't figured it out in years. But anyway, I think it's a stupid design. Second one. What was it? Story. Okay, we've lot, heard a lot about stories. Um, every man and his dog now is a storyteller. But what he was saying was effectively, if we need to be able to persuade, to communicate, um, and to get people to understand that we need to kind of put it in different ways other than data and analytics and throwing numbers at them or information. We have to kind of bring people in a story. I'm not, okay, I'm not going to say anything else here because, yeah, you understand that. We, we've been, story has been done to death <laughs> lately. Symphony is the third one, okay. Now, symphony is being able to put things together to be able to, kind of see the way of the land, see patterns, identify insights, see the trends. And that is a real skill to have. And you can pick that up simply by getting involved in a whole lot of different things that are outside your work. A lot of different interests, a lot of different um, uh, hobbies, um, exposures to different people. So you can actually see different patterns. Some of the other things he mentions about um, Symphony, well, let's have a look at what he says. Hit the newsstand. Okay, some of this book is a little bit outdated. <laughs> so he's telling us to go to a newsstand and pick out some magazines and um, magazines that you wouldn't normally buy, uh, bring them home, cut them up, you know, and just get ideas. Thing is, you can do this online as well. I would just say start varying the type of reading that you're doing online. You can even, um, you know, get online and see your magazines and borrow magazines from the library through your iPad. You can do that quite easily. Another one is to draw a lot. I must admit I don't draw enough, um, but when I do, I, I do enjoy it. And he does mention uh, a book by the name of Edward, uh, by Edward and von Meisler, Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain, which I um, really want to get, actually, it sounded really interesting. But um, anyway, so you could, you could do that. Uh, what else? Let's see, the fourth one is empathy, okay, being t able to understand how other people live and work and their relationships and their values and their traditions. Now, let's have a look. So after the... the topic on empathy which okay we've heard a lot recently some of the things he says that we could do is to test ourselves there's a whole heap of different uh, empathy um, quotient tests by Simon Barron okay I might put the link there below emotional intelligence quotients spot the fake smile test which is a BBC 10 minute 20 minute question test based on Paul Ekman's research. Okay, um, take an acting class. Anyway, you get the drift. All right, so next one is play simple, be like a kid, be curious, go out there, do it. Don't spend your time over planning and over coordinating things. Play is a critical part of the way we learn and to get um, some more right sided right brain thinking into our lives. I don't play enough sometimes, I think. Um, I'm pretty serious, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, yeah, so what else does he say? For, for play, okay, play games, obviously. Play right brain games. That's all he says about here. Play at inventing. Yeah, I must admit. Must admit, we you know when I was doing the CNT character of Shazza Break News, the foreign correspondent, I was in a play element there. It was creative, it was an acting class, it was out of my comfort zone. That was pure right brain thinking. But the process of create, coming up with a story, coming up with the outline, setting up my shots, creating the video, that was left brain. Must admit, that was one of the highlights of uh, my time. Uh, on any project playing her. All right, so what do we need? No, meaning, okay, meaning is a big one. Finding purpose in our life, 
um, that's something that you kind of have to find yourself, which is something that I've been going through for a while now. Um, so with meaning, it was really interesting. He talks about these labyrinths, and I don't know if anyone has seen these labyrinths. Now, these labyrinths are kind of like, it's not a maze. He puts a distinction between what a maze is and what a labyrinth is. A labyrinth is somewhere where you could lose yourself but find yourself at the same time. And there are labyrinths where people paint these circular labyrinths on the ground and it allows people to walk these circular paths and kind of get into a mind state where they could you know um, kind of stop thinking about their problems for a while and get them into another is another zone and these labyrinths he says that they're all around the world and there's a labyrinth society.org where you could type in your city and country and find a labyrinth near you and there's even a labyrinth society and a British resource centre on all things labyrinth in the UK. This is really interesting. Walking the Sacred Path, a book by Lauren Artress. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to go and explore labyrinths. Anyway, so this is A Whole New Mind by Daniel Pink. It is a bit dated, I must admit, in the sense that a lot of the concepts, the six senses here are not new you probably would have already have come across them. However, now their reason and their meaning is a lot stronger and a lot more emphatic simply because of the world that we live in now. So A Whole New Mind by Daniel H. Pink. Let me know if you've read it. Let me know what your thoughts are. Okay then, bye for now.